Hi all, um, I'm Charlotte Thompson. I'm a Senior Biosecurity Officer for the Sheep and Goat EID project at the Local Land Service in the Central West. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and waters and we pay respect to Elders past and present. We're committed to providing places in which Aboriginal people are included socially, culturally and economically through collaborative approaches to our work. Um, a little bit about Sally Martin. So Sally's career in the sheep and wool industry spans more than 30 years. After leaving the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries more than a decade ago, she started a sheep genetic and consulting business, which we now know as Sheep Metrics. Welcome, Sally. I'll hand this over to you now. Uh, thank you very much, Charlotte, and thanks everyone uh, for joining us today. And um, I need also just acknowledge uh, Matt Jones with um, LLS and Deep, uh, New South Wales uh, Government, so for instigating uh, today. It's a back flow on from um, some of the electronic identification uh, workshops that we've been running and there was a, a seems to be a real need for understanding Excel as well um, as all the other um, aspects of EID. So I'm going to just briefly cover off on um, so storing your data. I've got some ideas in terms of how to, how to do that um, with it in mind knowing that you'll be able to find it again. And then we'll go through some basics of Excel functionality and in particular, I've got utilising um, electronic identification data that's being captured so that you can actually see what some of it might look like. We'll have a little bit of a chat about uh, bucket files and also setting up your traits on a stick reader or an indicator, just some ideas that we've got there. And then once you've captured some information, downloading those files and what it will actually look like and and the so the subsequent webinars will go into more detail about doing more analysis and and how you can actually start looking at your data. So today is very much about getting back to basics. So it won't be full uh, presentation mode. Um, this is probably there's, I've only got a couple of few slides, but I just thought there's a few terms that I think it's really important to become familiar with. And you'll, you'll, so you'll hear the um, abbreviations. We're all very good with acronyms at different times, but VID, so which is a visual identification, which effectively is the tag number that would be printed on, on your tag. And then you'll, where, you'll hear EID, which is your electronic identification. Sometimes some software and, and indicators or um, uh, refer to it as RFID, which is basically radio frequency identification. They're one, and they're basically, you know, the same thing. And you'll hear us talk about stick readers. So I've just got a few, couple of exam few examples of um, some stick readers. So these are basically handheld um, devices that you can press a button and scan a tag and it will read the electronic identification. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. You'll also hear us talk about indicators and there's a couple of examples of what an indicator is. Sometimes people will call them a wave scale or scale head. Basically they're um, indicators you would connect to load bars to capture um, body weights. And also they um, can drive auto drafters and um, things like that. We won't go much into panel readers, but that's another term that you'll hear. And I've already mentioned what a bucket file is, which basically, and I'll give, show you some examples, a bucket file is about pairing. Uh, it's an Excel spreadsheet that has the electronic tag and the visual tag paired up for you already, so you don't have to do that manually. So I think there's some important terms to have a think about. So what I would like to have a look at now is just start, start simply. I think storing your data is probably one um, a really important aspect of utilising Excel because you can have lots of names and it's captured on um, either your stick reader or your indicator or your software. You've captured some information. Making sure that you've got some really um, really clear labelling and naming of your data files. So I'm going to show you an example just of how I store information. So this is, um, I, 
in I've just got a, a basic file name here. What I would recommend is you actually store your data in the um, in a folder for the year drop that those animals were born. So for example, I've just got some set up here. So for all of the animals that were born in say 2020, and we've captured some information for them, we're going to put it into the, the folder for the 2020 drop. So then when you want to go back and find it, it's quite easy then to do. So a good example would be say weaning weights or anything like that. The data that you don't need to then, uh, so you might capture pregnancy scanning but you don't have to then split that up into the year drop. So put your pregnancy scanning, for example, here's a pregnancy scanning file. So I would actually, because it was that all of these ewes were pregnancy scanned in 2024, I would actually store it in my 2024 drop folder. So it relates to the animals that are going to be born in that year. So I hope that, um, that explains um, that, that quite well. What I think is also really important is put the year drop. So you will have um, uh, information uh, potentially captured where, where you've got a tag colour um, and that refers to the year drop. The challenge is if you start getting more than seven years of data, you'll start having the same um, year colour. So I prefer to put the year drop and then what um, a bit more description in terms of what you would then be having um, in your file name. And so we've got an example here and try and be as descriptive as you can so that if someone else comes along into the business and it's easy for them to quickly look at it and go, okay, here's this example, it was the 23 drop use, we captured a weight and we've got a date when we actually captured it. Um, so it doesn't sound like rocket science and it's not, but it will help you find things because if, even if you go looking for it in a month's time, you might forget what, what you called it. So let's get into some of the looking at the functionality of Excel and uh, we'll go through now just sorting columns and being able to find a range within um, information as well as I'll show you a couple of formulas. So what, um, let's go to, um, let's just say we've, we've captured um, some weaning weights. And the other thing that I will show you is what files will look like once they are downloaded. So that's just opening up. Make that a little bit bigger for you. So this is a file that's been downloaded. So this is some weaning weights. And what you'll see in your, um, this has been um, captured and downloaded directly from um, a true test uh, indicator. And it's in a CSV format. A key rule when you capture information um, into um, and download that into your, um, onto your computer, Always, um, so if anything you get from today, save it as a different file and we want to, you can um, save it as an Excel spreadsheet. So if you notice before, if I'll, and I'll talk a bit about this in a little minute, is this is in a CSV format. So we always want to save a copy. So save it as an Excel format and and then you can change the name of it or you can call this, um, let's call it our working file. And the reason that we're not going to work on our original file is so that if something goes wrong, because Excel is easily corruptible, um, if something goes wrong, you've always got the original to go back to. So I can change this down here as well, down the bottom um, of your left-hand screen. This tab, I can actually change that to say there are the 2003 drop weaning. So then I know exactly what it is that's in this file. 
So with Excel, there's um, we can actually do some sorting. This is a pretty basic file, but to go, right, well, without putting any formula in, you, you could actually go up into this data and you can put on a filter. So you can see now I've got little um, arrows that are pointing down and I'm actually able to filter. So you can have a look here. We've actually captured a couple of weights here that are like 2.1 and 2.9. So they're probably misreads. So we can identify those straight away by having a look at this. But we can also see what the range is. So at weaning, we had, um, and this is a raw data file. I haven't tampered with it. So this is simple, sim similar to what you might see. You can actually see that we've got, um, you know, a couple of animals here, a few animals here that are in the 37, 7 um, kilo range. So we've got quite a spread. So what you can actually do is you could in, um, insert, oh, so I've right clicked, so right click here and I can insert um, another row and we could actually put in a formula equals and let's just look, work out the average and we open that um, bracket up and we can copy that down. Now to copy it down without, and I'll put some of these cheap um, sheet, um, quick tools in um, some notes for you. So if you go control shift and arrow down, that will take you right down to the bottom of that spreadsheet or until we've got a gap. So we've got a gap here. So this is somewhere where you've got to be a little bit careful with doing you with your um, with your formulas. So we want to make sure that that goes right down to the bottom of. Um, so we've got lots of gaps. I haven't played around with this just so I can show you some of the tricks or traps that you can fall into. So these gaps, um, that little tool that I showed, uh, talked about, which was Control Shift and Arrow Down, uh, would would stop at those, so you, you're going to miss those. So then we'll just, um, now we can we can close the bracket or you could just hit equals. And so that's now given us the average. So the average of that mob um, is 23.6. And you can, you can tidy up um, where you go there, just so you don't have to look at too much. So what we can actually start doing is because we've copied this, we can actually rank it from top to bottom. So we know that these two uh, aren't correct because they're a misway. So unfortunately, we don't have the correct weight on those two animals. We can also um, go down to the bottom. And so we've also missed these weights on these animals here as well. So already we've got some you know, we're starting to identify some, I guess, weaknesses with our data collection. We might need to take a little bit more time when capturing it, but the information that we've got on all of the other animals um, is still very, very valuable. Um, and the, uh, I just wanted, so once you've done that, you can save that and we'll move on from there. So this data sorting I find is quite useful uh, and we'll talk about that in a little while in terms of how you might actually be able to manipulate that. Let's say hypothetically though we've been, uh, we, so I've right clicked again, so right click on my mouse and I want to insert a column, so I've highlighted that whole column. Um, say the phone's rung and I've gone away and I've come back and I go, right, I'm going to sort, I want to, I want to sort this again. So we put out our sort. Do you notice what's happened? Automatically Excel has just put it at the top here. Um, so I can turn that off. If I want to make, and I'll just do that one more time. What it's also done is it's missed these rows. So if I sort on this, automatically I've corrupted my data. So undo is your favourite friend, undo. So this particular animal should have been up against um, this tag number. So if I sorted that, let's just do it again. So it's moved things around. So automatically now, if I went and did something, I've actually corrupted that data. 
So undo is an, our, as I said, our friend. But if you want, if you don't have anything in this column, to be able to highlight that whole row. So I've just highlighted that whole row, and I'll go and put the filters on again. And now it's picked up all of my all of my columns. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest traps with corrupting your data in Excel. If this, there is a, a blank column in here and you put a sort on and then you try and sort it and it doesn't pick up all of the columns, that's the easiest way to corrupt your information. So um, let's go and have a quick look at uh, what a bucket file looks out like. We'll come back to some of this stuff as well. So this is a typical bucket file where we've had our visual tag and so we've got a pick number in this particular, um, so these are she wells, that this they have a, as an RFID. Um, we've got our NLIS, we've got a visual tag and we've got the, the, the dates that they were manufactured and, and the colour of the particular tag. Again, what you would do is so these particular tags have been ordered with this visual tag printed on them as well and so it's automatically um, paired up that electronic tag with the visual tag now because i liked it so again i would save this as the original so again we would go in and we would save as and we would don't need it, we want it not as a CSV format, but as an Excel file, because we're going to do a little bit of it, put a bit of information in here now. So now I've got my, my bucket file that I've saved um, as a copy. Now I don't, so for example, if you were wanting to upload this information to um, your XR or your indicator, uh, uh, sorry, your indicator or your stick reader, you probably, you won't need to put on your pick, so you could delete that. Don't forget, I do have a, uh, uh, the original saved. And so I'm just basically going to get rid of all the information that I don't need. So I'm just right clicking and deleting, deleting those columns, and then I'm saving that. Now, if you are uploading to a um, true test indicator, for example, or stick reader, um, you would need to change the headings to EID and then also it's not visual ID, it's VID in the indicator at all the stick reader and you would need to check if, if you're using software or another brand, we'll have a look at a Gallagher brand um, download in a minute, you would need just to check that your headings are correct. And we like to say this is tag colour because that's what, um, just for to make it easier. Um, now, I just quickly wanted to say if this is where you can actually utilise your buffer file without actually scanning a tag. So, for example, if you have captured information with uh, your, uh, say, at landmarking time, so we're putting tags in at landmarking time and we have, uh, you've got your preg scanning information, you've land them down as singles and twins. You could actually put birth type um, in and start capturing that information. We could also have dam, dam um, age and maybe paddock, let's just say. And so all these animals here that were born, so the tag sequence is what we're looking at here, tag sequence. They might all be singles. Let's just say we've had 20 in the first mock, just um, out of the to ease. Now, another little trick that I'll show you here is if in view, you can actually go over to, so I've gone to view, freeze panes, and I can actually freeze my top row so that if I scroll down, my top row will stay the same. So that's something that, that I use quite a lot. So let's go back to putting some information into the bucket file without scanning a tag. So all we've done is I've got you to write down your tag sequence at landmarking time from one to whatever was the first mob. And let's just say these were out of mature age use and they're out of the hill paddock. So you can highlight this, that little, see this little 
green square here, you can actually pull that down or you can double click on it and it'll take it, except it follow, went all the way down if I double clicked on it, so I didn't really want that. Just delete that. Um, Sorry, you're probably getting dizzy looking at all this. <laughs> okay, so we've got our mature age use. They were those ta that tag sequence, and now we've gone onto the. We've got some twin twin lambs, and they were from let's say the maidens, and they were um, if I can spell, and they were in the um, let's just say uh, dam paddock. And we'll, we'll talk about how you can then utilise this information um, in, down the track as well, that you can actually start analysing what might be happening in your paddocks. You may be doing this already, but this is another way that you can do it. So all you need to do again is click on um, that um, little green square and you can pull that down. And let's just say these particular, that, that these views were, um, all in that particular mob. So again, this is just an, a quick way that you're able to then bring that information in and we've saved that and then we go on to the next job. This type of information is actually then what you can upload onto your stick reader or your indicator and actually use it later on as well. So we will talk a bit more about that. Okay. So um, we'll go back to the, um, so we've talked a little bit about, about averaging and um, we'll, I'll just open another file that we can actually have um, a look at doing some other things in Excel. And I've got um, some samples of, let's just say you've had some um, samples, your mid side or pin bone sampled and um, sent it down to um, get, get a, a micron test. So you might get your information coming back looking a bit like this. So what you're able to do is, so again, you're going to have, um, you're going to have differences in Excel in terms of what their what their headings are, and what I just uh, if you are looking at potentially uploading any of this, I make sure that your headings are the same as what is in the device that you're going to be uploading it to. So, for example, this looks like we've got all EIDs in here. Um, and the other thing is that you won't, you won't be able, if you've got this top row, you won't be able to upload that. So you need to make sure that each column has the correct heading. So again, what was the first rule that we talked about? We need to make a copy. So if I go down here, this is our original data file. If I go down here and I right clicked again with my mouse, and I want to move and I want to create a copy. So automatically what we've now got is we've got the original data file here and I usually don't change the, the name of this so that, that I know that that's the original. And then if I double click on here, I can, so these are 2023 drop, uh, this is a RAM and U file. And, and look, you can do, if you right click again, you can put colours on here. I often put green as the one that I'm working on. And if I've got other people working with me, I actually put a red. So um, red means don't touch and green means go. So we can, we can use this, this particular file. So just a couple little simple things. I find being quite visual that helps. So we don't want... Uh, so we want it. So again, um, I've uh, right clicked with my mouse and I'll delete that top row. We can turn our filters on. So back into data, turn our filter on, and you can actually have a quick look at. Um, and this is an interesting one. So we've had two animals come through that we weren't, that maybe had lost their electronic tag. 
So what we're going to do is right click and insert another column and we're going to call that our VID. And so we don't get, so your indicator or device um, will, and software will all get a bit confused if we have visual tags and electronic tags in the same column. Even though it's an identification, it's really important that we separate those. So we'll just paste those, actually, should have, that should have been a cut and paste. Sorry, I should do that again. So I highlight those and I control C, or you can go up into, um, actually, I never use this, isn't that terrible? So control C and then control V, I've copied and pasted those. And they're just some shortcuts to be able to, um, co yes, copy um, and I think you can do that as well. So, you, yes, so you can copy it there by right clicking. You can, um, yeah, make make a copy and then you, you can paste that by, um, um, by putting that there. That. So that so that's probably a, another really important aspect in terms of utilising Excel and where you can actually use your filter function to find any any issues or problems. We've made some comments as well at sharing time, so you can actually have a look at those. So we've got, um, you know, if they were bricks, fly struck, we can actually start capturing this information and utilise it later on as well. So after shearing, they might heal up and we might not see that problem again coming up until classing, but we can actually include this information, our comments, when we actually go through the animals um, and, and looking at them uh, later on as well. So we don't, you, you don't have to lose that and, and it's easily uploadable. This is where you would, and we will talk about this in the next webinar, is how you bring in the, the fleece weight information and um, being able to then uh, start analysing how you might um, deal with that. So I'm going to, um, because I've been working on this and I'm going to save this so I'm not, not um, so this is my now my working file. it over the original um, and, and that, that I, I can't stress enough that that's um, and also you could put the date which this actually does have today's date on it but you can put the date that you change things just so that you understand um, a, you might have the same name of a particular uh, um, let's go so you've got might have a, a, a name that's similar um, to I'll save somewhere else on my computer. Um, here, it will give you a version control. So, for example, this one here, I've got the date of the 22nd of the 6th, 24. So that just, if I then start looking at this information and I put today's date, I know which one's the last one that I was working on. So it gives you a bit of a version control if that's something that's important for you. So we've talked a bit about um, yeah, finding the range in, in, and looking at sorting your columns. I did want to just briefly talk a bit about the difference between this Excel which, um, and the CSV format. So we've been able to have a look at, um, so this particular file is in an Excel format and I've got multiple sheets. So if I close this, um, I will be able to, um, it's, if I just, I'll just resave that and make sure I've got it in the correct location. So I'll look saved on this file here. Okay, so if I close that, I should be able to open it. Now, if I have this saved as a CSV format, uh, so we're going to save it as, 
and I'm going to just change the CSV format. And I just want to show you something and then I'll explain it in more detail. Um, so that's being saved um, on my stick drive at the moment. Okay, now this is asking me, so it's telling me that um, this file type, which is our CSV, comma delimited, um, is not supported having multiple sheets. So I've got two sheets here. And what this, this is saying is that if I close this down, I will lose the, any of the sheets that um, are included in this um, spreadsheet that um, aren't open at the time. If I just hit OK, and we'll close it, and we've been working on this, and we want to go back. And so now, if I have a look at, this is another quick way to be able to find things that you've been working on as well, um, is that you can date modified or the name of the file. So let's go, so this was the file that we were working on before. Um, that was it in, in the Excel spreadsheet, and now it's in the comma separated values. If I open that file, it will give an, it will come up with the spreadsheet that it was last opened to. So now you can see I've I've this was the file that we were working on. However, I've lost that other spreadsheet that was my original. And so that is a, a, a trap. Um, for if, for example, and why I suggest that you save your files um, or make a copy of them and save them as an Excel spreadsheet so that uh, in Excel format or worksheet format so that you can have multiple sheets. So say we've done a heap of graphs and tables and things like that on multiple sheets. If we were still in that um, CSV format, you would lose all of that. So that's just something, um, and I'll show you, the reason that, that it's in CSV format is this is just an example of what it would actually look like. So I hope you can see this. So this is actually the bucket file, and you can see that all of the headings um, and all of the data is just separated by a comma. And this is potentially the, the, main, the main kind of format that a lot of the softwares and all um, like to have data uploaded into them. So um, the CSV format will become, it, it is your friend, but just know that it does have limitations and that there are um, traps with that. We don't read it like this. We look at it um, similar to um, to this version here uh, in terms of how we can actually um, be viewing it within Excel. So if we were to save save this file now and we wanted to, so this was that um, the bucket file that we were talking about before and we put in some birth type information based on some pregnancy scanning. So this is for a commercial breeder where you have um, land your ewes down as singles and twins and we've captured the age of the, the ewes. If you want to put more detail as in mature age, you can. Um, I guess I'm just using an abbreviation for this particular um, example. You could, so we've saved this, um, I'll just go back here again. So that one is already saved as an Excel workbook format but we might want to save that as um, in CSV format. And so what that allows us to do is then to be able to upload that information um, to an, a device, for example, a stick reader or a um, indicator. Okay. Oh, yeah, I have a question for you. Oh yes, yeah. sorry, Charlotte. So if you didn't save it as a CSV file, you would have to, you wouldn't be able to upload it to a stick reader, is that right? More than likely. Most of them do prefer, most of the devices, whether it be software or an indicator or a stick reader, 
Um, you might get some that that are able to have a, an Excel spreadsheet uh, work worksheet, I should call it, uploaded, but majority will be in this CSV format. And part of the reason, um, the part of the reason for that is if we go back to um, let's just say we've got this particular file here that we had open, which was the the fibre diameters. Let's say, for example, we've got um, just set that open. Uh, say we've got this in this particular format, and we want to upload that, but we've got um, we've got. Um, well, I've been working on the wrong one. Oh, isn't that a good trick? Um, so again, this is this is typical of what can happen when you get distracted. So um, I should have been working on this one. However, I was working on this one. But at least we've got the original save. So that's um, we'll I'll change that now. Seven, and we'll make that red. Doesn't like that. It's already taken. Doesn't like that. Yes, okay. See, this is what happens when you're in a hurry. <laughs> two, this is live. Um, so this is our 2023 drop rams and use. And we'll make that green, sorry. But I think it just highlights the, the challenges and, and where things can go wrong if you're not thinking, um, trying to think ahead. Anyway. Even consultants can make mistakes, that's okay. <laughs> Absolutely. So I've been working with this for over 20 years, so hopefully you guys are uh, getting a bit out of um, all the mistakes that I learnt and tricks. So, But let's just say, for example, that we've saved this and um, we've got rid of any of the, the, the columns, so I'm right-clicking um, because I don't want to upload. Um, let's just say this is going to now be a file that we... Um, upload into um, and let's just do so what I would normally do is I would make another copy in my original spread worksheet I would have multiple copies and I'm going to call this this will be um, 23 drop FD upload so I know so I've got my original that I've been working on here and then the file that I'm going to then upload. So there's going to be certain information. I don't want to have everything on my um, indicator or my stick reader I'm going to get rid of. So what I'm doing is I'm quickly, um, and depending, so, so you're above 30 is very similar to comfort. So I'm right clicking and I'm going to delete. And comfort in my indicator is COMF and say I, um, I don't need the spinning finer, so right click again and I'll delete that. Um, and um, I don't need the yield because I'm going to get my greasy fleece weight percentage later on and I don't want that one just uh, as an example. So now I can save that and if I save that as the normal worksheet where it currently is, what the indicator would get confused at is I've got multiple sheets. So some of the software that you require to upload into either one of your devices gets a little bit confused about which sheet, so which data sheet should it be uploading. So if you save it as in a CSV format, it gets rid of all the other sheets except the sheet that you want to upload. So there's less confusion when, so the software that, um, which is very, very simple because it's looking for these um, headings and it'll, it'll pull in or suck in all of the information that sits with this electronic tag or this visual tag um, so that when you either scan that tag, all this data will come up for you at the same time. So um, I hope that answered um, answered that question. Sure did. I have another one as well, um, just for producers who are, I guess, starting out um, collecting data using EID tags. Um, how 
can they or where can they access um, a bucket file for their tags? Great question. So your bucket files, and um, I'm not sure if I've got it here. So your bucket files um, uh, usually come as a CSV format and where you find them. So Allflex have um, a website where you can actually download. So you can put your PIC number in there uh, and we can have that in the notes that go with this recording for you. All other tags, um, to my knowledge at the moment, need to either come through um, the tag manufacturer or the reseller who you purchased them from and you, and you sh would request those to be emailed to you. Um, and as I said before, some of them will have this RFID, some will have EID in there and the visual tags will be, there'll be a couple of potential ways that that is um, described in the spreadsheet. But basically, yeah, so Allflex is the only one that I'm aware of that you can download directly from their website. My understanding is also that the tag manufacturers potentially will be upload, I think will be uploading your information to the NLIS database to say you have purchased, you know, X number of tags um, and this is, their, um, the PIC that's associated with the electronic tag and any other information that came with it. So if you don't have a visual tag printed on your electronic tag, this won't come with it. It'll just be your PIC, uh, your NLIS number, which will be created, um, sorry, through, so you'll have your PIC number, then you've got the manufacturer, so every, all the manufacturers have a separate um, letter, whether it, um, and then the species, so whether it's sheep, um, goat, and and then the year. Each year will have a different um, year number, letter, I should say, apologies. And then this five digit here usually refers to your visual tag, or if you don't have, um, your visual tag, it will actually be, um, it, it, it will be self-generated. The, sorry, Charlotte. Oh, I was just agreeing with you, sorry, Sally. Oh, no, that's okay, thank you. Um, the RFID then, yes, is, is, so you've got the manufacturer in front, so that's an Allflex one here, that's a Shewell, you'll have um, uh, 964, I think, is the Z tag, and 951 will be leader, and and then um, a, a serial number that will follow. And and these electronic tag numbers should all be individual. They're not looking. We shouldn't have any duplicates. As well as our NLIS number will also be um, an individual, uh, unique number as well. And so the other thing that I didn't mention, um, may have mentioned before, but when you are setting up your traits in your devices, um, be mindful that some of them are case sensitive. So for example, if you have greasy fleece weight and then in the spreadsheet, you go to upload it and you have it in lower case, it'll actually make up a separate trait for you. So, uh, it won't know that they're the same thing. So just be mindful. Uh, and again, this is about being consistent uh, and trying to make sure that you've got um, the same the same information on both. Um, we talked a bit about um, yeah the the different uh, making a making a copy. And what I just thought I'd do is just show you briefly. Um, some of the, the different ways and the information and how it might look when you download it. And then um, next time when we get together, we'll talk a bit more about manipulating the data and, and being able to upload it. So this is um, some information um, that Tim Gold sent me from his um, Gallagher um, indicator so that I can demonstrate what it looks like. So this this is how it comes straight from um, the indicator. So in this particular example, 
um, they didn't have a, a visual tag, so um, it's just automatically recorded the uh, electronic tag into it as the visual. We don't have an NLIS uploaded, but you may want to do that if you want to directly upload information to a um, the NLIS database, but that's for another day. These particular years were, were um, pregnancy scans, so we've got dry and whether they're pregnant, and we've also got a lot of body weight. So as you can see, these are um, different headings that what we might find, we'll have a look at um, some information that comes out of the um, a true test um, indicator as well, just to show you what some of the different types of headings um, might be. Um, so that was so some people may have an old XR3000, and um, this is an, an example of what. Um, the download will be coming from that. So again, you've got, it, it, it's, it's in a CSV format, and this particular one was um, where we were capturing some uh, TSUs. So again, this looks quite different to what you, you might have seen with the, the Gallagher one. And there's one other one I'll quickly show you. And then this is out of a, a, a true test um, XR5000, just some um, weaning weights. So again, the headings um, look slightly different, but if you're only dealing with, you know, no doubt you'll have the one device, so you'll get used to the headings, but I just thought it was worthwhile just showing um, what that might look like. If for example, we wanted to have a quick, let's just say we, um, do we got any, oh yeah, we do. So we've had one animal that's um, lost its electronic tag at weaning time. And so you're able to replace that, but you can also type in um, the visual tag if, um, if at, at, when you're capturing that information. The other thing I just thought I might point out is Say, for example, you've captured this information and then you want to, um, and then we want to actually upload our bucket file. So you can upload your bucket file after you've scanned tags into your, your devices. And what that allows you to do is it will um, marry up the electronic tag with your um, with your visual tag later on, so you don't have to have it all, everything doesn't have to be all set up right from the start. It does make it a little bit easier. If usually we're looking at ordering tags around after preg scanning so that we know how many fetuses or um, likely number of lambs that we'll have at landmarking time, you can actually have some of that, um, that bucket file uploaded into your indicator if you want to capture that, that um, data at landmarking time, but you can also do it later on as well. Um, so that's probably, um, so I, it, yeah, having a look at uh, probably, yeah, sorting, making copies, so right click and we want to move and we want to make a copy. So then we can start um, you know, working on this one. So this is a 2023 um, weaning weight. We've got the date in here that they were collected and you can have the time, whether you want to keep the time, that's completely up to you. Um, so I'll just make sure I'm working on the right one. Um, so you can delete that, but you might keep the, the, the date or put the, you know, the date up here. So, you know, you can start start looking at doing many things like that. And again, that this is that data file that we had a look at earlier that had a couple of those weights that, that haven't been collected properly. So you just might go, well, we might, you know, data's important to you. Um, make, just taking the time to make sure that the animals are on there properly. Could have had a, you know, a feed off, a foot off or it rushed out quickly or something might have happened. So just, just taking your time to capture that well. 
And probably the last thing just to talk about a bit today was um, having, yeah, so having a look at some of that information. We've talked a bit about the spreadsheets, but you might want to upload that bucket file. We can talk a bit about alert files next time and um, we haven't really looked at the preg scanning yet but so there's there's potentially good opportunities to be able to have your pregnancy scanning information that you can that might be captured um, by your preg scanner there's a lot of people that are capturing that information now and um, not wrong file um, so. So many of you might capture whether they're early's and late's um, and you know dry singles twins. So what what you're able then to do is um, to have that information. So whether they're early pregnant um, or you can collate it all into into one. So and then have a, a pregnancy stage. What I would recommend is having the 24 in front. Um, and, and setting this up as a separate trait because if, for example, we go and put this data in next year and we go early pre, what will happen is it will actually override that information. So in Excel, we're, we're okay to make sure that we've got all that information captured. Um, and what you can also then have is then multiple years. So you can start getting your spreadsheet together where you've got multiple preg pregnancy scanning information. And we might actually have one um, that's called preg scan and a really, I think a quick way to be able to bring some of this information together is there's, um, and we'll put this in the notes, uh, it's called CONSENA. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to pull all of this information together in one um, column. So now, and then I can just double click on that little uh, arrow, uh, sorry, square, and that will copy that formula down. So now if we, I could just upload this file, this data. We, I, I could have all of this, but it might be easier just to look at one piece of information on the screen. Um, and so, by looking at that really quickly, I can know that that U has had twin, twin, single, single. The U below, she had one, it was dry twice and then was pregnant with one again. And I'd question, well, why was she still there? Um, in this particular situation, you might go, well, I've got some gaps here. So you might put an X or something to know that, that um, she's missed or maybe she didn't turn up. So what just to, so you've got some continuity. And so with that formula, um, which I'll leave up on the screen there if you um, for a minute, um, that's a really quick way to be able to collate multiple pieces of information into one that then you can actually have a look at that in whether you're classing or um, you could potentially draft on that, but um, it might that might be um, it, it probably would be easier, yeah, to have you, your drafting system should be able to draft up to 10, um, 10 um, parameters. And, but yeah, it, I guess overall, it, I think it's just a, a quick way to be able to have a look at, you know, what, what certain animals are doing. This again is only pregnancy scanning. We're not looking at then, you could potentially overlay that again with wet and drying. So um, is another way that you could actually utilise that information and formula to be able, yeah, to, to visually quickly see um, with one number rather than having to go, oh, you know, looking through through multiple. So that's just, um, a, um, yeah, one quick formula there um, for you to have a quick look at. Um, so I guess, yeah, that's, um, is there any, uh, it's probably, um, Charlotte might be good just to hear from people is if there's anything in particular that they're not sure about, like Excel, there's huge amounts that we will have a look at, but, um, yeah, is there any questions or?
There is one. So Pamela, you've got your hand up. Let me see if I can unmute you for a second. I'm not sure if I'll be able to. Um, give it a crack, Pamela. You might not be able to in our settings. If you want to write your question in the chat, um, I can um, verbalize it for you. Um, I quite quite like that um, the consatinate. I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but that's a great way to see trends in, um, especially in preg scanning. So it's a new one for me. Yeah, yeah. So then we could yeah go up into here and, and you could actually sort on that as well. Um, yeah. So I'll up sort of the wrong way, but um, yeah, you can find find your lower numbers and yeah, it it is a quick way to be able to pull pull information together. Um, I quite like it for multiple preg scans. Yeah, really cool. Um. If we have we have any more questions, just pop them in the chat, and um, yeah, I'll ask Sally them as well. Yeah. So next time, what will? Oh, sorry, Charlotte. Did you have anything? Um, nothing from me. Um, just going to say though, they've got the next two coming up. Um, in um, in on the eighth of July and the twenty second of July, which will um be more advanced um than the this basic one as well. So. Um, I think we've got a couple of questions here. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, the, um, we've just got a couple of people asking about recording. Um, yes, these are recorded and um, you will get a copy of the COP recording via Teams, um, which will be automated, but I will send out um, a link to where they will be uploaded to our website, which will be, will be captioned as well. So um, I'll let everyone know that. Um, so yeah, each one will be, will be recorded. <coughs> Um, and that's all from me. Sally, did you want to add anything? Uh, I guess if anyone does have anything in particular, we are going to do a number of recordings of uh, smaller segments uh, of, of what we're going through over these three webinars. So if you have anything in particular that you're interested in, we might be able to include uh, that information in those smaller recordings that uh, hopefully will be quicker to go to. Um, I can see um, there's John has his hand up as well, but I can't, we can't unmute yeah. people. Can't unmute, yeah, because of okay, our that. settings. Um, so Millie's just asking, um, can you move columns around in Excel or do you need to upload the file back onto the device in the same order it was initially downloaded in? Uh, really good question. Uh, no, you don't have to have it in the same order. So for example, uh, let's just say we've got this um, sheet that we've got um, and let's we uh, I'll just tidy it up let's we'll get rid of that um, and say for example if we were wanting to put it up and um, so this was actually drafting because I think some culls uh, or whatever it might have been we can actually you um, you can have have them in in a, in a in a different order what it is going to look for is it's going to look for that name. So the name or the heading that's in your spreadsheet, um, like I was saying before, so say that was weight um, is what's in the spreadsheet, is in the, the indicator um, or the stick, then that's what you need to have it and make sure, you know, if it is, um, you know, if it was capitals, you need to make sure that they're they're the, they're they're the same, but the order of the 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 columns doesn't have to be the same. Good. Um, and Pamela's got a question regarding the EID number. So there's a space. So it's nine four zero, and then it goes space. She's just asking if that's relevant, and do you get do you have to get rid of it? Uh, yeah, great question. It is relevant and important. So yes, there is a space. If I get rid of it, what happens is, is it corrupt, starts to potentially corrupt the data. So what you've actually got there is Excel doesn't like those long numbers. So by having the space in here, it actually thinks it's like a text. So um, it doesn't, um, 
get rid of things that it shouldn't get rid of. Um, so yes, the space is really important. If, for example, you have, um, let's just, uh, I have received, uh, I'll just do it with a couple, I have received um, data um, that looks like this. So we've actually got, you know, the, the, the uh, space hasn't been included. A really quick and easy way to put it back. So, so the other thing to notice is sometimes if it's in this um, kind of scientific format, there's probably a better word for it, sometimes it does lose the last number. So it will, it, it may lose that last number. So just be careful. Um, but to be able to put the space back in, if um, in this situation, is highlight the column and you'll go up into find and replace. And if you type in 940, um, and I'm just going on the, the, the what, what's in the beginning of these um, electronic tags, which will be consistent the way down, and I'll we'll double check on this in a minute, but 1, 1, let's say 0, and then I'm going to go 940 space 110, and I go replace. It'll actually it'll put those spaces in automatic well, or, yeah, automatically for me. So just be careful in terms of how many numbers you go um, wide. Um, the danger I like to do about six, and the reason for that is if um, let's just undo that. If we were to redo that and and I didn't put as many in, let's just say I did one, there may be another number somewhere in here, which is 9401. I, I, I have to go and find it, but, um, it, and it would put an extra zero, talking to me, um, it, an extra zero. So I just like to put a, a few extra numbers in here just to make sure that it is picking up this part of the number not a 9401 in here because we don't want it at at um at this end of the we don't want it to find something at this end of the number and put a space in does that make sense that's to me thanks sally um and john's just asking what happens if a tag is lost if a tag's lost similar to i uh, uh, as in an electronic tag that we don't have a, so um, in in this weaning file, we had an electronic tag that was lost. So these particular animals were tagged with a, an electronic and a visual tag. And the visual tag is printed on both the visual and the electronic tag. So these animals happen to be double tagged. So we can read this one and replace the electronic. If you lose an electronic tag and you don't have the visual, um, and we don't have the visual, then you've lost that data on that animal. So at a commercial level, I d you know, you shouldn't, well, the, the tag should be able to be retained for the life of the animal. Um, and that's what the accreditation program is for with um, the MLIS. So I guess the main thing is that how you put your tags in will be really, really important. Um, so placement of tags and, and also hygiene at tagging time is probably one of the key things for tag retention. Great, thanks Sally. Um, that's it from the chat and we are running slightly over time. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll be um, back in two weeks time for the second one. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much, Charlotte, and thank you, everyone. And if you do have questions, please let us know, and we hopefully can accommodate that in the next session, which will go into some more um, advanced side of um, Excel with some other formulas and, and ways to be able to look at your data. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Sally, and thanks all for attending today. Thank you.